Are you happy it's the last caucus before the summit? Well, I enjoy my job, and it's a real privilege to be a member of Parliament, to work with colleagues from coast to coast. I like to be there, and I like to be in my writing. What do you think about the situation with the RCMP commissioner? She put out a statement last night saying, look, I did not interfere, I would never jeopardize an investigation. How do we move forward with this? Well, I think we have to clear the mess. This is very concerning. Uh, I was very surprised yesterday, to tell you the truth, because the news uh, broke out during the question period. And, well, uh, I know where we're going, the question period. And then when I saw my friend, uh, John uh, Brassard, asking tough questions, and I said, what the hell is that? So this is a very big uh, issue, very big concerns. We need to clear the mess on that, and uh, I hope the government will be more clear than it was yesterday. So I can assure you that as a role, we have a service role as an opposition party, we will have question on the government today. Should, should the Public Safety Committee investigate <coughs> this, look further, dig deeper? Well, I'm not the guy who can tell you our strategy, where we are going, but the thing is sure, on behalf of Canadians, we need some good and, and clear answer from the government, which we don't have yet. How does the government clear the mess on this? Like, what specifically do you think that they need to answer? Well, How should they go about this? Well, what we have seen yesterday is, is again, another example of a government who, who doesn't know where to go. Uh, I mean, you know, the, obviously the, bro the, the news broke during the question period, so this is why our House leader did a tremendous job again, asking tough questions to government to, to clear the situation. But the government did everything but clearing the situation. So for sure, we will continue to work on that and to be sure to know what did happen in but, that situation. This but, is very concerning. But Minister Blair was quite clear in his denial, saying we never did this. No one from the PMO, no one from his office directed the RCMP commissioner to do this. That sounds quite clear. So what what more do you need to know have, in this I regard? Have, I have a lot of respect for Mr. Blair, okay? This is not personal at all. I, I do respect him a lot. and. You know, to tell you the truth, I was very surprised how he acted during uh, the occupation in Par in the, on Parliament Hill a few months ago, but that's another story. So, but I think, you know, what we see is some contrary testimony, and we need to be very clear on that situation. And yesterday, Mr. Blair, as far as I'm concerned, was not clear enough, and so this is why this is serious business very serious and we cannot stand any hinge of you know uh, not clearance on that we need to be very clear so this is why we're asking we'll continue to to go on on that do you want more answers from the rcmp commissioner because you know it's all based on something that she may or may not have said at this meeting so should the rcmp commissioner be well, more as, far, uh, as well well you know as far as i'm concerned when we need to, to, when we when we want to know exactly what it happened, I think that all the key players should say that what they have to do on that. But the thing is sure, as opposition party, we did our job yesterday, and I can assure you on behalf of all Kenyans, and we'll continue to have a tough question to be sure that uh, we will have the real situation. C'est malheureux pour les Canadiens, mais on constate plus que jamais que c'est un gouvernement qui est dirigé par une poule pas de tête, parce qu'il n'y a strictement rien qui assure l'unité à l'intérieur de ce gouvernement-là. C'est un gouvernement d'abandon. Les Canadiens sont à même de le voir actuellement, qu'il n'y a pas de direction qui est solide dans ce gouvernement-là. Tout le monde fait un peu à sa tête avec des erreurs qui sont tout à fait catastrophiques pour des milliers de Canadiens. Euh, la démonstration la plus claire, si besoin en était, c'était la pitoyable gestion des passeports. Moi, j'entendais ce matin <coughs> Mme Gould qui disait candidement à la radio, au micro de Paul Arcan, que oui, ça fait six mois qu'il savait que la situation allait, 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 se préparer, allait, allait se vivre. Écoutez, comment ça se fait qu'une ministre sérieuse puisse dire ça fait six mois qu'on se prépare à ça puis qu'il n'y a strictement rien qui a été fait correctement? C'est tout à fait inacceptable. Non, on s'en rappelait aussi. Vous avez l'histoire justement de, de la GRC qui, qui est sortie hier. Vous avez également l'histoire. Euh, <coughs> pardon d'un gouvernement qui envoie des représentants officiels du ministère des Affaires étrangères à l'ambassade de Russie, qui est tout à fait inacceptable. On voit de plus en plus que c'est un gouvernement qui n'a pas de direction, qui n'a pas de gouverneur, qui ne sait pas où il s'en va. Puis malheureusement, c'est les Canadiens qui en payent le prix. On le voit avec l'exemple assez cinglant euh, des passeports. What exactly can the government do to clear this up to your satisfaction so that you are 100% satisfied with the About what? The RCMP. The RCMP. Well, what, what can they do? Well, to, to, to tell about the RCMP? Yeah. Well, I think we, we need to know exactly what it happened. This is serious business. Is it enough to just declare, make declarations in the House and question period? Well, we, uh, as I told, as I said earlier, I'm not there to expose what our strategy is. Uh, but the thing is, sure, on behalf of Keynesian, we will continue to push the government uh, to, to help to tell the truth. 
Are you surprised? I mean, the allegation is that there was political interference because of pending gun legislation. That was the reason that Brenda Lucky was seeking, you know, this was, does that surprise you? <sighs> well, unfortunately, we have seen the government putting aside, uh, I would even say, I would not say public safety, but I will say about, you know, we have seen a government calling an election during a pandemic. This is totally unacceptable. We have seen the government tough, being very tough for a party because we have some people who, have not, who are not vaccinated. And they made a political uh, issue a health care issue. That is totally unacceptable. When we talk about health care, we have to be very neutral because there is no political gain to, to do with that. But we have seen this government in the last two years put it a lot of emphasis, political emphasis on the health care issue. So when we see what we have seen yesterday about the RCMP, unfortunately, I could not say that I'm very surprised because this is a trademark of this party to use some issue for a political purpose, while those issues should not should never be political issues. And the healthcare system, the healthcare situation that we have lived in the last two years, the, the prime minister calling an election on that, calling an election on the fact that we need to have mandate for vaccination for civil servant, he called the election on that. This is total. That was totally unacceptable. Thanks. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Gauchman, do you think uh, Commissioner Lucky was uh, politically influenced in discussions around uh, around the gun case, the around the mass shooting and the and the gun matter? I think it's interesting to see that the notes from the commissioner in Nova Scotia uh, said that implicitly. Um, RCMP make great notes. Uh, they're used in lots of court cases. Um, so, in this particular case, I mean, I, I would better. Uh, believe what they're saying versus what Miss Lucky's saying at this point. So what should happen now then if you believe that? Well, ultimately the ministers are going to have to come clean on what they knew about this. Uh, I mean, 22 people died in Nova Scotia. You know, we as Nova Scotians, uh, you know, mourn the loss of those people as they were our neighbors. And to hear that they use that as a as a political uh, piece to advance their their gun their gun legislation, it makes me sick. We heard the minister Blair deny what we heard in the note yesterday. So what should happen now? Is that enough to bring this up in question period? Like how should you and Nova Scotians get the answers you seek, I suppose? Well, ultimately, uh, you know, I know our, our members are, are planning some questions for today. So I guess we'll see how that rolls out uh, this afternoon. Uh, you know, this is, this is one of those unfortunate times where as Deputy Speaker, I'm just going to have to, to, to stand and, and support my members as we, as we roll along. Should the Public Safety Committee look into this further to try and get more clear answers? Uh, I think that would be a good thing. I mean, of course, we have to wait till the Mesh Casualty Commission finishes it wor its work. Uh, but again, uh, there's going to, I think, uh, more of these things popping out as, as, as we go, go further into it. Do you have confidence in the Commissioner's uh, ability to lead the force? I mean, I'm not going to get deep into that into that one, but uh, to see that kind of admission uh, from some of her members about her her uh, you know her, her her work in this one concerns me a lot. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate you stopping. Mr. Moss, when you know the RCMP commissioner and uh, the situation that's popped up, do you still have faith in Brenda Lucky to be the commissioner? I think uh, Commissioner Lucky's in a pretty uh, difficult position given the history of this government and their interference. Um, you know, I look back to a couple of things over the years and, uh, you know, I, I think she's trying to do the right thing. However, she's got political masters that pull some strings that are inappropriate. So what should happen now? How do you get to the bottom of this? Right now? Get rid of the government. <laughs> the, how are things going with, the, with what happened at the inquiry yesterday? Do you feel that there's political influence on Ms. Lucky for how the communications plan is rolling out versus how well I'm, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that a former police officer such as mr. Blair would basically say in the house yesterday that the detailed notes that RCMP officers took in the middle of the biggest mass shooting ever which are notes that have to be defensible in court he implied that they were wrong that somehow the RCMP officers got it wrong in their notes that are used for court defense and recollection of the, the investigation. I find that shocking that he would accuse the RCMP of that. What do you make of Commissioner Lucky's response? Because she also um, denied in, in a way, if you will. Do you have confidence in her? Uh, the commissioner has not got any notes, unlike the officers. So I'll go with the notes. What should happen now? 
I think the uh, government has to be held account and the minister needs to resign. Why? What would that do now? What would it do now? It would restore honour and integrity, hopefully, in the cabinet and truthfulness, which seems to be missing. But how do you get to the bottom of this? Because well, right that's now, what, what the inquiry is for. Bill Blair, as public securities minister, refused and fought having a public inquiry. He did not want this inquiry, and now we know why. Do you think there should be some sort of committee investigation to look further into this Absolutely. if the commission doesn't go down the avenue of whether there's political interference in communications or not? Well, Commissioner Lucky will be before the public inquiry in a few weeks, so I'll be interested to hear what she has to say there and whether she's going to continue to contradict the testimony and the notes of her own officers. But in terms of holding the government to account on this, do you think the committee should be looking into this further? Absolutely, 100%. I think, I think the only way you get at political interference, because that's not part of the inquiry as I understand it, is for the for the, uh, for the Parliamentary Committee to take a look and understand what's going on in that organization. How do you think all this news is going to sit with your constituents and Nova Scotians? Oh, they're going to be very upset, and they already are. I've been getting emails, I've been getting phone calls from people saying, how can this happen? Is this true that the, the commissioner tried to impose a political agenda on gun control using the biggest mass murder in Canadian history? And they find it disgusting and abhor abhorrent. Thank you very much. You. Today, Conservatives are going to be asking the Speaker, not the government, to uh, deal with uh, what we think are three very important issues that are facing Canadians right now and requesting an emergency debate of the Speaker. One is the passport fiasco that's going on. The second one is the inflationary crisis and the affordability crisis that are facing Canadians. And the third one is political interference in an RCMP investigation in Nova Scotia. We will be making that request to the Speaker. We feel that we now need to use uh, what limited time we have in this House, in this session of Parliament, to deal with issues of the day, not issues that we think are going to happen in the fall as it relates to uh, the extension of hybrid Parliament. So we're going to be making that request to the Speaker today. Can you just clarify the request? What exactly is it you're requesting? A debate? Uh, emergency debates ah, okay. on, on, three on, on, on three separate issues. And the request will go directly to the Speaker. The first issue is on inflation and affordability. Obviously, with the inflation numbers being at 40-year highs this morning, the impact that this is having on Canadians, families, businesses right across the country, 7.7%. The second thing that we're going to be focused on is the passport fiasco that's happening across the country, uh, the unpreparedness of the government, lineups that are happening, police being called in for crowd control in Montreal. And the last one is the political interference into the police investigation in Nova Scotia. I expect that we'll be dealing with this in, in the House today uh, through question period, but we're asking for an emergency debate on that as well. On the last point, does it need, does the MPs looking into this, does it need to go beyond the House? I mean, the leader was here saying she wants an investigation, but she's not really sure what form that should take. Like, how do you plan to seek answers to what we see out of the mass casualties? Well, I think at a, minimum, at a minimum, it needs to go to committee. Um, there's, pretty, there's evidence that was uh, released yesterday about a commander on the ground, an RCMP superintendent, and the meticulous notes that he took that suggests that the RCMP commissioner was acting on the direction of the Prime Minister's office and the Public Safety Minister's office uh, to uh, get involved in this investigation and to release in, in, uh, information from the investigation. The commander made it quite clear, and others who were in that room, some who were brought to tears, uh, said that they didn't want to do that because it would jeopardize the investigation. So we need to find out the truth. We need to find out what they're hiding vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, Prime Minister's office and the Public Safety Minister's office. I know what he said yesterday, uh, but this is a pattern with this government. We heard, we heard it once. The, the, the story in the Globe was false. Well, the story in the Globe in the SNC-Lavalin scandal and political interference actually proved to be true. Uh, so these are the things and questions that we need asked, and that's why we're going to be asking not just for the emergency debate, but we expect that this is going to end up at a parliamentary committee so that we can get to the truth on this matter. There were 22 people that died. The, the politicization of this issue uh, by the Prime Minister's office and the uh, Public Safety uh, Minister's office needs to be investigated, given the fact that a week later they announced gun regulations and they were using this, they were using this tragedy uh, for political purposes. It needs to be investigated. Do you have confidence in Commissioner Lucky? Because, I mean, she, if, if the allegations are to, believe, to be believed, she could have said no. I think that's up to the committee to find out.
I do. But do you have uh, confidence in her? I think she has a lot of questions uh, that uh, need to be asked of her, and she needs to provide answers to those questions. And the best way to do it is through a parliamentary committee. Do you I feel have this to get is into something caucus. Force over the summer, though, like to try and get a parliamentary committee an emergency meeting. I think I mean, you we guys need are to do it. Up and I think we need to do it as soon as possible, Steph. Uh, you know, the allegations just came out yesterday. These are very serious allegations of political interference into an investigation of a mass tragedy in Nova Scotia. By by the Prime Minister's office and the Public Safety Minister's office. The notes of, of the commander on the ground indicate that Commissioner Lucky was there on behalf of the Prime Minister's office and the Public Safety Minister's office. This needs to be investigated thoroughly and it needs to be investigated as soon as possible. Do you see that one of your colleagues has suggested that the, the Mass Casualty Commission needs to finish first, that they need to finish their work and you know wrap up that before they should be tackled politically. What, what do you think of that? The political implications of this are such that the information that was released yesterday clearly indicates that there was some direction from the Prime Minister's office and the Public Safety Minister's office. With that information that we have, it needs to be dealt with quickly, in my opinion. Uh, we can't let this wait until the, the uh, Commission's inquiry is finished. This is information that has been presented to Canadians. Uh, very serious uh, implications of political interference into a criminal investigation. Uh, the politicization of a, of a uh, an unbelievable tragedy in, uh, in uh, Nova Scotia and the fact that the government wanted to use that tragedy for the purposes of their own, uh, furthering their own political ideology and agenda as it relates to, uh, uh, to guns. So um, I think it needs to be investigated quickly. So I thank you all. I have to get back into uh, caucus, but thanks for uh, your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stats can has new inflation numbers out. Yes. What are you seeing? What are your thoughts about them? Well, the last time we had uh, an increase in inflation this bad, it's when we had another big tax and spend divisive prime minister named Trudeau. And that was back in 1983. And so the, uh, the issue that we have today, and I asked uh, Minister Freeland about this yesterday, is she has caked into her budgets $100 billion of stimulus spending not related to COVID-19. She was warned by the parliamentary budget officer that this would cause inflation. She was warned by opposition members that this would cause inflation. And here we are today. She's making the lives of Canadians more difficult at a time where government should be trying to make things easier. So this puts more pressure on the Bank of Canada uh, and the government only has itself to blame. <laughs> un bilan, un bilan assez décevant évidemment pour les conservateurs. De toute façon, ça fait depuis six ans qu'on a de la difficulté à avoir, un, à donner un bilan positif au gouvernement de Justin Trudeau. Et là, on a le summum actuellement. De, dans le fond, ce qui se passe avec la crise des passeports actuellement, bon, c'est le c'est le summum de ce qui, qui était de l'accumulation des dernières années d'une gestion déficiente. Euh, euh, aucun contrôle de la fonction publique, des, un laisser-aller généralisé qu'on a vu dans plusieurs départements comme en immigration, par exemple. Et là, ce qu'on vit, ce que le citoyen vit à tous les jours, c'est le symbole du gouvernement Trudeau des six dernières années. On a introduit là, ce matin un système de rendez-vous avec des numéros. C'est un chaos total, c'est sûr que puis de laisser les gens comme ça sur les trottoirs pendant des heures, la, à, toute la nuit, euh, c est, c est, ça n'a aucun sens. Un gouvernement du G7 là, traite ses citoyens de cette façon-là. On dirait qu'on est dans, des, dans une ligne de banque alimentaire, là, dans un pays du tiers-monde. Je veux dire, ça n'a pas de sens. Euh, on devrait avoir... Premièrement, on aurait dû appréhender d'avance qu'il y aurait une, une demande accrue de passeport. Il y a des demandes de passeport qui datent déjà du mois de mars. Les citoyens étaient en droit de recevoir leur passeport comme à l'habitude après un maximum un mois. Et là, maintenant, de voir ça, qu'on on on fait un peu de la loterie, on donne des numéros, mais on ne sait pas trop comment ça va fonctionner. Donc, il y a, il y a un chaos qui est, euh, le, sont incapables d'organiser ça de façon efficace. Et, bon, Rappelons-nous les aéroports avec la COVID. Euh, on avait le même problème. La mairesse de Montréal a dû envoyer des renforts à l'aéroport parce que le gouvernement fédéral avait perdu le contrôle totalement de ce qui se passait. Donc, c'est symptomatique de ce gouvernement-là. Vous avez sur les nouveaux chiffres d'inflation qui sont sortis ce matin, ouais. 7,7 ouais. Est-ce que ça, ça vous inquiète? Ben, effectivement, que l'inflation continue de grimper au Canada de façon effarante. Là. À un moment donné, euh, les mesures inflationnistes, on le dit souvent, qu'il y avait des mesures inflationnistes, des, des, de l'argent qui est investi 
de la façon que les libéraux le font, a créé de l'inflation et on voit que la ministre Freeland n'a pas l'air à comprendre du tout comment ça fonctionne, l'économie. Il euh, n'y a rien qui améliore, il n'y a pas aucune mesure qui est prise non plus vraiment pour aider les citoyens, comme par exemple baisser les taxes sur l'essence et des mesures qui pourraient aider à baisser l'inflation euh, et donner surtout de l'aide aux citoyens parce qu'à un moment donné, les, les gens sont plus capables de payer. Merci. So Sure, yeah. yeah. It, interesting this morning uh, to read that uh, the Prime Minister is off to Rwanda about eight days since he tested positive for COVID-19. So we've got a really uh, problematic situation that the government has created where they've said that um, unvaccinated Canadians who return to Canada, if they test negative for COVID, have to quarantine for 14 days. Now, the Prime Minister uh, returned to Canada after uh, contracting COVID while he was away, returned to Canada, still within 14 days, has now got on a plane and is flying elsewhere. So uh, we're continuing to ask the, the government for, um, for the science that supports the rules that they've put in place, uh, the rules they've left in place, and the rules that they've lifted. Uh, contradiction after contradiction um, continues to come up. So um, we're going to press the government for that, but it's pretty concerning uh, when, when it just changes basically to suit uh, the Prime Minister's travel agenda and not based on the science. Was it not concerning for the Office of the Leader Opposition to not be clear when Ms. Bergen had COVID, that she even had COVID, and then when she actually did it, and then she came back into the House of Commons? Uh, that was unclear. That was very unclear. And your leader wasn't unclear about when she had COVID. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I can't speak to... Uh, to very close to her. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I'd stand directly next to her right now if she was standing here. So I don't know the details of that. The Prime Minister announced to the public that he was COVID positive immediately following a trip to the United States. So that is a fact. It is within 14 days of that. That is a fact. He has now got on an airplane and has flown to another continent. So these are facts. It's also a fact that they've put in rules that have no scientific basis that seem only to serve to punish the people that he said have unacceptable views, that are mostly misogynist, that are mostly racist. So that's the contradiction. So if, if any other parliamentarian or any other Canadian is following public health advice or following the science, that's great. What we have is a prime minister who seems to rely solely on political science and not make any decisions based on medical science. He's completely out of step with what every provincial medical officer of health has said, and he's been out of step with them for months. We've heard from Dr. Tam that it's not the public health agency of Canada who's making the decisions on when these mandates are lifted or when they're put in place. We've heard that it's a decision for politicians to make. So it is very clearly political science and not medical science. So um, I, I think you just had an opportunity to speak to uh, the leader of the opposition would have been a great question for when she was here. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. Have you endorsed anyone yet? No, no endorsements yet, of course. I think it's important we see what everybody has to come up with over the summer and see where it goes with what, what everybody has to say. Michelle Rempel Garner running for leadership of the UCP. Well, the UCP has a lot of qualified candidates there. I think having one more qualified candidate in the mix doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt anybody. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so, Adam Chambers? Yes. First interview with you, sorry it's been a while, so I hear you want to talk about Biden and the gas tax and if he cuts the gas tax today, so just, uh, well, what are your thoughts? Uh, President Biden has asked Congress to cut the gas tax and he's going to ask all the states to cut their gas taxes and one will question why our government's still dragging its feet on that issue. And what's different in Canada and the U.S. is our Prime Minister can unilaterally make that decision, doesn't have to ask Parliament for, uh, for authorization. So, you know, Canadians will wake up this morning 7.7% .7 in inflation and wonder why it's taking so long to get immediate relief, especially at the gas pumps. And are you advocating uh, provincial premiers do this as well? Well, we've already seen Alberta do it. Ontario, I believe, uh, first week of July, you're going to see a reduction. So, And we will see that prices will be reduced. We've seen that already in Alberta. So, you know, over to you, federal government. Okay. Thanks. Well, we'll catch up later if, okay. uh, if he does it. Thank you. Thank you. What do you make of Trans Mountain no longer being profitable according to the PDO? Well, the profitable analysis, of course, that he's done is based on a bunch of numbers. We know there's a lot more numbers that are beneficial to Canada, including a mitigation of a $6 billion differential that happens in getting our oil to diversified markets. That's not included in the report. This is a huge, important uh, project for Canada. It's infrastructure that we require, not just in Canada, but the world requires this resource right now to offset some of the other oil that's no longer on the market that we know is not going to any good cause at this point in time. So we still need this built at this point in time. The numbers, you take a look at the delays on here, we'd like to see where all that money went, because we're talking about an overspend of about $9 billion 
find out where that money went at the end of the day, but in the end, no matter what, we still need this resource to get to market. So, I mean, how do you justify that? You're your party of fiscal responsibility, it's costing us this much money, it's no longer to be profitable. Like, it, the private sector well, wouldn't you be have to, You have to decide what profitable means at the end of the day. You're going to stop a project, $21 billion into it, or are you going to say, let's finish that, or are you going to tube it at this point in time? Every infrastructure project in this country right now is getting delayed, is costing more. You take a look at Site C Dam, you look to, take a look at Muskrat Falls, these are all way over budget, and part of that is a result of a regulatory regime that has become much longer and much more onerous, and that's why capital is leaving Canada and not investing in these projects. It takes government to invest in these projects now because of a bad regulatory regime. Is this now a public subsidy? It's always been a public subsidy when you get there at the end of the day. The public had to invest in this in order to get it going. There's a reason the previous proponent left, because it no longer had viability on what it was seeing at the end of the day for its investment. There's a reason, as I say, why capital is fleeing Canada and not investing in these projects. This project is long in the tooth. We know it's $9 billion over budget. Where's that $9 billion going? It's not like there's been any more pipe. The route was already there. It's practically a twinning of the old route. So where has $9 billion extra of Canadian dollars, Canadian taxpayers' dollars gone? This is some of the things we'd like to see, but mm -hmm. in any event, in order to monetize the importance of this pipeline for both ourselves, for Canada, for Canada's oil and gas industry, particularly for our allies around the world that need this resource right now, this has to be completed as quickly as possible. Can I ask, ask you just real quick about the environmental racism bill? Um, what are your concerns with Elizabeth May's private members bill? I, I, you're catching me off guard here. I'm not yeah. sure what you mean, the yeah. environmental bill racism C bill. Bill 225 okay. it's Well, I'd have plant. to look at the bill and it, we'd have to take a look at exactly what the, what the issues are around that bill, but I'm sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, uh, I'm not particularly fluent with that bill right now. We're looking at this uh, Trans Mountain being very important yeah, no. today, so thank you. Just you're both standing here. I wanted to get your reflections on the fact that uh, U.S. President Joe Biden seems willing to push for a cut to the gas tax, and maybe to, you're raising your hand like it's yours. Yep. No, no, thank Come you. Uh, so, so it's a great question. So first of all, we have been calling for months for this government to start addressing gas prices. Uh, we've been asking for a break at the pumps, whether that be through the GST or whether that be uh, through the carbon tax. This government has said no all the time. And so suddenly, now we see the Biden administration putting forward a legitimate uh, suggestion to have a tax holiday at the pumps. Uh, and so right now, we are going to continue to press the government to see if they're going to, to push in that direction. We want them to. Look, every time they reject a suggestion by conservatives, they think it hurts us. It actually hurts Canadians. It hurts the people that are trying to get to work. It, it hurts the people that have to get to medical appointments that don't have access to public transit. And so the question is, it, will the minister be taking action on this and, and give Canadians that relief? If you look what the Alberta government did, they actually lowered their gas taxes. Trevor Tom is, is, is out there uh, from the University of Calgary saying that there was a actual drop in Alberta's inflation rate because one of the key, point, the key inputs to inflation is gasoline. So this is a way that we can both fight inflation and give people uh, a break at the pumps so that they can pay for the important essentials that their families need. If the question is, will the government be looking for a similar gas tax holiday or are they just looking forward to the holiday over the next three months from accountability in this place? Thank you, gentlemen. Ben, c'est parce qu'on crée, on enlève une file pour en créer une autre. Alors, on, on règle pas de problème, on pèle par en avant. Puis encore une fois, les libéraux font de la, de la poudre aux yeux et essaient d'émettre de, de de, des solutions temporaires euh, en réaction, mais pas de vision, pas de plan, pas de leadership. Oui, c'est inquiétant. Et tout était prévisible. Alors oui, c'est inquiétant. Maintenant, faut ju on va laisser juger les Canadiens et Canadiennes. En fait, il devrait, en fait, je vous, arrête, je vous interromps, ils ne devraient pas manquer leur vol. Le gouvernement devra, devrait prendre ses responsabilités et trouver des solutions. Merci beaucoup.